Hello, my friends. It's me, Karen Valentine, and we are back for another bit of coloring on our page from um, Imaginary Friends. I think I called it Imaginary Dreams in the last video, but I can't remember. <laughs> but it is Imaginary Friends by Carolina Kubikowska. And um, I went ahead and finished up the body on our little kitty. And it's really kind of cool at how different, um, but the same. I don't know. It's cool. I'm really, I'm really, really liking what's, what's happening here. So um, I'm going to carry on. And I guess we don't need that right now. I'm going to carry on and do some... Um, leaves and um, maybe we'll do this bit right here and maybe this little flower up here. So I think I decided because I absolutely love the way um, uh, purples and oranges look together. I think I'm going to do the flowers in purples and maybe yellow. Purple and yellow I think will look really pretty. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's pull out just a couple of browns as well. And I'm using polychromos again. I'm pretty much going to use the polys in this whole thing. Um, they work so, so beautifully on the drafting film. Um, to be honest, I have not tried um, Prismacolor yet on it, so that is something that I still have yet to to um, to do. But I will, <laughs> and um, we'll either do another um, another piece on drafting film with them, or I will let you know that it was a terrible, terrible disaster. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, um, I haven't heard one way or another if they work well on drafting film or not. So I am just going to go ahead and start. Um, I have no idea what colors I want to use. I don't know if I want to go for the really olivey ones, the really nice olivey greens, or if I want to go more like bluey green. Oh, that's a hard decision. Mm. So we could go blue greens, or we could go yellowy greens. Oh, I like them both. <laughs> All right, I think I'll start with the bluey green. Sometimes they actually look really, really nice mixed. So um, we'll test that out as well. Um, okay, so you will notice, let's see, we'll zoom in just a little bit. I don't wanna zoom in too much because I'm afraid I'll get out of camera. Um, you will notice that my um, pencil is not super sharp. The, um, the end of it is nice and rounded, and my instinct is to stick it in the sharpener and start with a nice sharp point. But that is not what you want to do on drafting film. So on drafting film, you want to um, start with your dull pencils and use a, use a rounded, dull pencil. And um, you save your super sharp pencils for the end when you're ready to do details because um, we don't want to dig into or leave um, harsh lines on the drafting film to start with. So you want that soft, um, fuzzy kind of look when you, when you um, put them down. So you start with your um, your dull pencils. Um, this is a piece of, it's called glassine paper. Um, it came in between all of my um, pastel mat sheets when um, they, or when it arrived in the um, pad that came from Amazon. 
and um, right now I'm feeling very hot for some reason and I feel like my arm is sticking to it but its whole purpose its whole um, the benefit of using it is that it helps to keep your um, skin oils and dirt and things like that off of the um, the artwork and the 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 whatever you're using to no matter what kind of um, substrate you're using but um, this drafting film seems to um, get dirty easily um, it does clean off very easily <laughs> which is a bonus but um, I'm feeling right now extremely, <laughs> extremely hot and sweaty. So I'm just gonna take a second, if you don't mind, and move my fan over. It might get a little bit louder, but, um, whew, I was having a moment. Needed <laughs> some air. Okay. All right, I want to add some more olive -y tones in with this kind of, I don't want to say a duller green, but um, I can remember when I used my Prismacolors, I loved to mix my olive greens with my jade green, and I think that's, um, this is kind of give me kind of a similar look, so I think I, I like this. I think we'll go for this. So again, not, um, not a lot of pressure at all, just gentle pressure. Let's see, I need something a little bit darker. Chromium green opaque. Yeah, that might work. Um, when I was doing the cat, um, the cat, body um, while we were off of screen, I started to add um, some black in for some shadows and was reminded very, very quickly not to mix <laughs> orange and black. Um, so just in case you guys decide to um, do your cat if you're if you're following following along with me I don't know if you are or not not everybody has this book and unfortunately um, it might even be out of print and unavailable to get um, but the purpose of these videos is not so much for a um, a color along but for you to see what's possible for you to see what um, you can do um, with your own coloring pages of your choice. Anyway, where I was going with that was I started to add some some black um, in as shadows <coughs> and was quickly reminded that um, when you add black to orange, it turns a horrible, ugly color. <laughs> and um, so just keep that in mind if you're going to um, do some shadows on orange always um, use something like um, uh, maybe a, a rich dark brown or some deep purples those look lovely as shadows but black on orange just is not a good, it's not a good mix Okay, I want something similar to my, you guys know I love my espresso colored pencil. Maybe walnut brown, maybe walnut brown. Um, you get so used to using the same colors, at least I do, like when you're using, a, you have a favorite brand, and it's like, oh, I need my favorite color. <laughs> to add a little bit so I can't really see what I'm doing right now and I'm feeling the need to stick that paper under there so I will probably do that off and on as I do this whole page it's cons 
um, continue to add the paper in and out so I can see what I'm doing. So like in this case, um, I obviously needed to add some more color in there. It's not darkening up. Why is it not darkening up? Okay, let's see. Again, I think that might have to be might have to be it because one more try because I can't add. So if I need to, I can add some black on the back when we're finished. Any area that I feel like, ooh, that needs to be darker, I can add the black on the back. If you add the black on the back, then the um, it just gets darker instead of turning into an ugly um, mess on the orange. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so let's see about a little bit more dark down the line, but again, this, um, this paper is so much fun to work with. Now I'm going to take my um, eraser and just do a little tiny bit of erasing and basically bringing in some highlight right down the middle of the leaf. Um, something that I am missing here though is the the little lines, and I do like them, so maybe we put a few of those in. <laughs> a few of those in. Um, it'd be easier for me to see what I'm doing, though, without. Now, in this case, I could add black. I think this is okay, though. Maybe not quite so harsh with the black. Okay, so um, let's just keep going. So this in the original this leaf did something that to my eye just was a little bit off. I always hate to, it's not a criticism of the artist, it's just that it visually didn't, didn't work for my eye. So, um, and that was right here where the leaf kind of ended in a, a blunt edge there. So I decided to take a little, a little artistic license and um, extend that leaf out a little bit. So do I want to keep this? I'm debating on keeping the, um, whether I want to put the, white paper underneath or not yet. For now we're fine, I guess. It does make it easier to see what you're doing when you take the, when you put the white paper underneath because um, you, you're not, you don't get distracted with all the stuff.
I did get kind of giddy when I was working on that, on the kitty, <laughs> at how really cool it looks um, without all the lines and stuff when it's just pure color pencil. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So. And I don't, I don't think that this is something that you necessarily get done more quickly. Um, I definitely think that it definitely takes time. But I think it's so worth it. And this is kind of the kind of coloring that I like to do anyway, where I'm just kind of immersed in the page and what I'm doing, maybe a good book. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun. Okay, this is brown ochre. But just a little tinge of looks so strange without having the the whole all the art underneath but I, I think well I don't know if you can see I'm not sure how I'm not sure if you can see or not, but um, you do have to be really careful when you're adding the color down, um, that you go slow and blend, um, you know, kind of, kind of blend your colors together as you're going, because you definitely, it takes the pencil so, so well that you can definitely have um, pencil strokes showing if you're not careful. What pencil did I use that got me that nice dark olive color down the center? I feel like I'm missing that. Oh, was it this? Olive green yellowish? I'm so confused. All right, what did I do wrong here? Let's see. Did I actually use brown? <laughs> I can't. I can't remember what I used on the first one that I really liked the. I don't know. This leaf is um is confusing me a little bit. It looks great there, but not not what I want. Um, okay. Let's try. Mm, I don't want to write on that. I want to keep that kind of pristine. All right, let's just try this one again.
So for some reason, it does not feel like it's taking, <laughs> like it wants to take the layers right here for whatever reason. It's not getting darker. Why is that? I really, I really don't know. Um, had no problem with the kitty taking lots of layers, so I don't know what this is all about. So I'm just gonna. This might be one of those cases where I do want to do a little bit of blending, if it'll do it. It doesn't always... Yeah, see like right now when I went to try and blend it, it just took that color right off. <laughs> so this is very interesting because behaving different than I am used to it behaving. So I don't know what that's all about. So I'll just try and blend that a little bit. And move on because I feel like I'm um, not going to get any better results on that leaf than I've got. So we'll we'll revisit that in a little bit. Yes. Yes, we will. Okay. So, started here. Um, on this one, maybe I'll go green first. Dark green. Uh, olive dark green first. Maybe I'll what is this? Chromium green opaque. get our lines in there. This is earth green. It's a pretty green. I like it. It's kind of gray. Okay. I hate the way that leaf looks right now. I might just try and erase that and see um, what I can do to fix that. That just does not look good to me at all. It's really bugging me. It doesn't, it, it has like zero realism in that leaf. So I'm going to see what happens if I try and erase it a little bit here with my putty eraser. Let's see if we can't bring that back to life because that's just, that was 
that's just yucky. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to start with the chromium green opaque. Let's see if this will take now. in here because it maybe should be okay that look that looks better already all right so this is the uh, earth green So there's a lot of shading on the piece underneath, so it makes it very um, hard to judge how dark I need to go. So in this case, I think just consistently putting the paper in and taking it out will help a lot. happen to really like the little dots here, so we're going to put those in. But then you guys know I like dots in my leaves. Okay, I think getting the flower done will help a lot. Um, And it may be that I wind up doing a lot of this and then going back in again later um, without Carolina's drawing underneath and then just start to do all the fine little details that I want to do. leave it like that. Um, this one might be just a little. Like once I get more color down, <clears throat> then I'll know if I need to start going even, you know, deeper. So maybe for this, um, this video, we'll just kind of concentrate on this, on this section right here. Because this can literally be done on any page. And again, I even think that, um, line art pages might even be even better for this kind of work because it it doesn't give you all the distraction with all the other shading and stuff
I still don't like that leaf. <sighs> Get a little bit more olive into this one. Not olive. Olive's not the right word. A little bit more of that, you know, kind of bright yellowy green. Again, using the Tombow eraser. There we go. And you can see it just pulls up little highlights. Should be using a brush. should probably have more color down before I try doing that. Um, okay. Should we do, let's do a flower or some flowers just to break it up and do something other than leaves. Alrighty, so I said I wanted to do purples. So we can go purple, purple, like manganese violet, purple violet, those kind of colors. I'm starting to look at my um, color chart here and I'm wondering if I would rather go with like corals and um, Pompeian red and cinnamon um, instead of purples. I'm kind of liking that idea, although I don't know if I can get it. Mm, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Yeah, I think I'm changing my mind. I think... Um, I think I want to go in more of a pinky, peachy direction. So I'm going to pull out Pompeian Red. Yes. And I think I have Coral here. Yes. In fact, it's all the colors that I pulled out to use in the cat's ears. Um, do I want beige red? Maybe not, but I do need a really <laughs> Indian red. Another one that I used in the cat. Hmm. And then maybe just for like some true deep red, we go like either mid cadmium red or dark red. Let's try mid cadmium red. Okay, I'm crossing my fingers that this is gonna turn out good because <laughs> I have no idea. Um, all right, so I have to remember that I can always lift back to white. So that's that's a good thing to remember. This is light yellow ochre. I'm gonna put that in the center. And then let's start with cinnamon. We'll start with cinnamon. So this will be interesting because I've never done a flower 
this way. I kind of think I want to build it out in sections for some reason. So that was cinnamon. And let's try Pompeian Red and see what that looks like. want to go darker. Let's go straight for middle cadmium red. Yeesh. I think I'm going to like that. Now the question is, is it pink enough or is it too close to the cat? I'm, ooh, I'm kind of thinking it's too close to the cat. And make up my mind. Uh, maybe we do go like mix these with purple. Well, sometimes it takes a second <laughs> of working that eraser over the area before it finally says, okay, I'm going to pull, and it lifts the color. Okay, um, I'm thinking that these colors are going to be too close to the cat, which I should have known because they were the colors that I used in the cat. Um, so, just going to try something. I don't know if I'll like it or not. Crimson I want. The color crimson, which is number, for me, number 38. All right, what is this? I know this pencil is really sharp, so I'm going to have to be careful. Let's see what this looks like with it. happy. Um, so part of me is like, okay, erase the whole thing. You did it with the leaf. It worked. I don't know. Maybe I just need to keep going. I don't hate it, but I don't know if I love it. Um, part of it, I think, is just that the <clears throat> there's not enough dark yet to define the um, the different petals. So, um, Boy, that is sharp, and I don't know how to dull that down. I think I need to um, scribble on a piece of paper. <laughs> Just scribble on a piece of paper and dull that blade, that uh, point down a little bit. Uh, 
Okay. So I, in order to repeat the color, I need to lay up the same base down. So we'll try. Maybe coral. All right, make it my paper. I'll put some coral down. So when there's no lines defining the petals, it's really important to get darks and lights. To define them because if you don't, it's just kind of a <laughs> it's just kind of a boring mess. So I am going to maybe use Caput Mortem Violet for my dark. All right. Get some of this crimson in here on top of this coral to give me the color that I no idea if this is going to work. is definitely sticking to this paper. It's um, it's humid here today <laughs> and um, we're not used to humidity here in Arizona. We had lovely rain for the last couple days. Not a ton but a decent amount and so after the rain goes away, we get humidity. You guys know what that's like, a lot of you, many, many of you. We're not used to it. <laughs> This is kind of purpley. I want to see if I add some black. Just in the deepest parts. I think that's going to help. And um, you know, that is a turned up petal. So I think in that case, I might want to pull out the beige red because we want that to be really nice and light. So we'll go ahead and add that. keep going and we'll see if we can't get this flower um, done. It feels to me like we're taking an extraordinarily long amount of time to get <laughs> just a little bit done. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because I'm it's new to me and so I'm slower. I don't I don't know. Or maybe it's just that this really does take longer. 
either way, I am having a lovely time. <laughs> I like the way the pencils feel on the film. pressure like really just kind of like letting that pencil float over the page with not much pressure Let's do the Caput Mortem. Do something for the inside of that the inside here and I don't know I don't know what that is but I want to do something so I'm going to I think that yellow is going to be the same thing as orange when it comes to adding black so I'm going to use the caput mortem Violet. I can always use the blade to scrape if that doesn't, if I don't like the way that looks, I guess. And I think the inside of the flower needs to be dark. I think that's the other reason that I'm not happy. So I'm going to use that caput mortem right in here. I'm finding this a little bit interesting because I did not think that I had that many layers down. And this just does not, that does not want to get dark. So, um, it looks, <laughs> it looks great on the page, um, not so great off the page. So I'm going to, Flip it. Let's see. Try and do this so I don't have to untape my book. All right, is that on this side? No, it's on this side. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to add the darks that I want under here. So that's one of the things that's so awesome about this paper, being able to work on both sides. Yes. 
one side won't take the color and you need the extra depth, flip it over and add it to the back. It's so cool. flip it back over again I get that I get that depth that I wanted right there in the center of the of the flower okay so we're just we're gonna keep going I'm determined we're gonna at least get this flower done all righty so cinnamon but it's like it's funny because like I put the paper underneath and I think oh I like it better without the paper and then I take the paper out and it's like, oh, I like it. I like it better. I like it better where I can see the line art underneath. I can't make up my mind. I like them both ways. treat that a little bit like it's the um, the flower petal folded over. I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. So we'll do that light or extra light. It almost looks the same because I'm going so light with the cinnamon. They're pretty together. They make a nice, interesting color. Mortem goes in for depth. Oh, it's very possible that the problems that I'm having in the areas that I'm having it with is because I was not diligent about using a piece of paper between me and my page. And my skin oils got onto the paper. Um, and I'm saying that because there are certain 
areas where I've got no problem at all adding this color on top. And then I come to other areas where it's like, okay, what the heck? Why is it not, why am I not getting any more um, color coming out onto the, onto the page? And I, the only um, explanation that I have for that is that I got um, my, my skin oils or something on there and it, um, it's keeping the pencil from eh, from going on there because some areas it's adding just fine. I think I want a little bit of shading under the, just a tiny little bit though. curious to see what it looks like. Okay. Not bad. needs something. We need that depth in there. That's what's going to make that petal not fade into nothingness here. You can can you see you don't notice it so much when it's on where there's a lot of stuff going on underneath it but when it's just a plain white paper you can see how my lines really show um, on this paper so when you're working um, you really have to be cautious of your strokes So that you can um, have a nicer finish when you're done. I'm going to use a little bit of the cinnamon right here on the edge. 
damage. We get so used to um, our coloring pages having lines around everything that sometimes I have to train my eye and realize that in, in reality, there would be no dark lines around the outside edge of that flower. So it's just a matter of what you're used to seeing and getting over that. Um, there is gonna be a lot of areas where I'm gonna have to come in and fill in and fix. I think after we get the main um, coloring down and then we can come in with our darks and really darken things up. But so far, I, I, I like the way that looks. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's just do a couple of the, um, these flowers. Like I can see areas where I I'm going to need to fill in with the orange. All right, let's just see if straight purple. Always pull out highlights with our eraser. It's another one of my favorite things about this paper is not having to worry too much about preserving my whites. And then uh, let's see, how do I want to handle that? Just do it lighter. Well, that didn't <laughs> that didn't work. It just colored it the same as everything else. All right, so let's get some Caput Mortem Violet. missing. And then I'm debating on wondering if a scratch tool kind of making the little center thing stand out might be okay. And then I'm just going to pull back a couple of That's not bad. Um but I still think I want it to be a little bit darker down there in the middle. I 
like that or not. Even. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Right. We definitely, um, we definitely made it smaller. It looks like than it really should be. We could have gone further out. Should I do that? Good. Okay. Let's do just a couple more. I think I want a bright yellow. I think that was one of the problems was that the yellow that I picked was way too dark. So I think I'm going to use cadmium yellow. And then we'll get that in the center of Just make the petal bigger. Although I don't think I can get away with that right there. Okay. You know what I could use instead of black, which might be a better choice, is dark, dark indigo. So instead of black, sometimes using a dark, dark blue, um, you can't really tell that it's dark blue. I mean, your eye kind of just sees dark, um, but it's not as... Um, harsh isn't really the right word, but I don't know. Just sometimes dark indigo is a better choice than just black. To, um, when you do this, you want to kind of keep your um, your brush a little bit clean. Uh, not brush, the tip of your eraser. Just maybe rub it on a um, a cloth of some kind, just to clean it off from the pencil that it's pulling off. one more flower and I think then we will um, call it quits for this video. I think you guys get the idea.
have something um, kind of cool and new planned for the background, so kind of excited about trying that. But I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You just have to come back and see. <laughs> Again, I think it just needs just needs some darkness. I'm not sure that dark indigo is dark enough. always worth giving it a try though. Oh, I don't know what I that's I don't like that. Don't like that. I wonder if I can get little dots on, on these. It's so tiny. It's probably just God, I'm such a weirdo for detail. Like, really? It's too tiny for you to try and add that. What are you thinking? Just... Okay. So... I think I'm liking it so far. Um, I need to add some, I think some more um, of the cat, I think is what the problem is there. It's not, um, yeah, what is that? I think it's just more caps. So maybe I'll just do that real quick right now so that we don't have this weird. It's a big space though. All right, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to increase the flower size a little bit. Then I will. Not sure, Indian red might be too red. So let me just fill this in. And also, I think. I think I want to scrape out a spot for that stem because it looks funny without having a a stem. And we may have to put it in on the other side. No, I guess it went in okay. dark. That's better. That's better. Okay. So. One more. There we go. 
So there is the kitty so far with the drafting film on top of Carolina's, Carolina's page. And there's what it looks like on white paper. And there's still a long way to go. So I'm not making any judgments on whether I like it with or without the, the page underneath until, um, until it's done. Now we could, since we've done this, if you wanted to, one of the things, okay, so one of the things that I don't like about it on top here is that I wanted the cat's muzzle um, to be white. And there's so much shading on here that it's not white. So because we didn't do it on the page, we could come in with um, white paint or white Posca maybe, um, anything take that out and not have fear that we can't color over it because then this will just lay right on top and her face will be nice and white. Although, you know what? We could also, you know, just thinking out loud, might also try putting the white on the back side. Should we do that right now? Let's try putting some white on the back side of the page and see what that does. And then we'll be done <laughs> for the day. All right, I am going to use, okay, so polychromos, kind of a sheer white, not very opaque. So again, I'm thinking that maybe a Prisma white might be better if I can find one. Um, this is a fun experiment. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to do this not just randomly solid. I'm going to do it like I would do it if it was whiskers because I don't know what's going to happen when I turn it over. So I'm going to go ahead and make whiskers on the back side. A little teeny tiny. I probably could sharpen it too if I wanted to. Now it's kind of nice to do this on um, a darker surface because I can see what I'm doing. If I tried to do this on a white surface, I think I would um, not be able to see what I was doing. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Sorry, can you zoom in? Okay, working on the back side. All right, let's see what that did. Very curious. Well, <laughs> it helped, but um, it's still, you can still really see the dark lines from underneath it. It didn't make it completely, um, completely opaque. So, um, but that's okay. I <laughs> that's okay. Um, I think this page is going to be really pretty when it's all finished. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on it some more off camera. And, um, and you guys maybe let me know. Um, leave me a comment in the description box if you want me to come back and keep coloring um, some other elements here on the page, or if you want me to 
um, finish it all up and then come back and show you the background. I would love to know what your thoughts are on that. So, um, yeah, so that is all for now. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Um, until I see you guys again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Happy coloring. Bye.